maji jina langu ni Zubaida Kome. Kwa mara ya kwanza Kenya imerekodi idadi ya juu zaidi ya vifo vya corona baada ya watu wawili kufariki kwa siku moja na kufikisha jumla ya maafa hadi watu na saba. Akizungumza kwenye taarifa ya kila siku kuhusu janga la corona nchini, Waziri wa Afya Mutahi Kagwe amesema wagonjwa tisa walifariki wakipokea matibabu katika hospitali kadhaa hapa jijini huku wengine watatu wakilemewa na makali ya corona wakiwa nyumbani. Haya najiri wakati visa vingine tisa vya corona vikithibitishwa kwa siku moja. Wakenya wamehimizwa kuendelea kuzingatia masharti yaliyotolewa na Wizara ya Afya ili kuzuia maambukizi. However, today I'm also saddened to inform you that we have lost one of the higher numbers at 12. 12 patients have died as a result of uh, COVID-19. All the 12 are here in Nairobi. Three of the cases actually died at home, um, and the rest of them are in the various hospitals, which tells you, ladies and gentlemen, that um, the, the, the people being affected are more as expected. Um, as you can see, the patient's age is across the board. And all these deaths are from a, a century community based deaths and this is the number this is the highest number of fatalities that we have um, recorded in a single day that is not good news and uh, our condolences go to the families of those uh, who have been who have lost loved ones when we pick people particularly when we are doing uh, targeted testing we don't charge anything all right. We, in, when we are doing surveillances and when we are doing those kind of uh, situations, when we go around doing mass testing and mass, mass testing identified as targeted mass testing, we do not charge anything. However, as uh, Dr. Ari is correctly saying, we, we are not doing testing for everybody. You know, we don't just go to the streets and start testing around. We test because there is some reason why that area, you know, should be focused and tested. As uh, Dr. Amoth explained, I think it was last week, testing is very expensive. And we don't, we don't just just for the sake of uh, testing as a government. There are our private labs that are testing, and we have urged them that 5,000 shillings is way too much money, you know, to test, uh, to, to charge people uh, on, on, on testing. So uh, the, the truth of the matter is that uh, we are not charging ourselves. 1,000 shillings is when people go to those government hospitals and present themselves not because uh, they have been identified as sick but because they, for whatever reason they feel that they should be tested but um, the government hospitals we are, we are not charging anything like 5000 shillings that's not that's not that is not us Nam nuko wote waliofikwa na msiba tunawapa pole tuzidi kuwa na tahadhari ili kuweza kupambana na janga hili Seneta wa kaunti ya Nandi Samson Chiragei amesema hali ya usalama imezorota katika kaunti hiyo na amemtaka waziri wa usalama daktari Fred Matiangi pamoja na inspekta mkuu wa polisi Hilary Mutiambai kuhakikisha wale ambao wanatekeleza uhalifu na mauaji wamekamatwa. Chiragei anasema watu sita wameuawa kwa njia ya kutatanisha katika kipindi cha mwezi mmoja. Ametaka maafisa wanaosimamia kamati ya usalama kwenye kaunti hiyo kuhamishwa kwa madai ya kuzembea kazini man the cabinet secretary interior and national coordination dr fred matiangi the inspector general of police mr ilari mutiambai independent policing oversight authority county security commander and area security personnel to within 48 hours bring the killers of sakayo kipkinyor and others to book and have justice served to families of the other victims pronto further we call upon the government to compensate the families immediately since they were dependent by their dependents we also demand a total overhaul of the county and sub-county security team and the review of national government administration officers for complicity. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we have been seeing in Nandi, within one month, six people have been killed. And as a county which is peaceful as Nandi, this is sad and unfair. The other day you saw rogue police officers kill three people in Lesos and injured severally. The other day you saw in Tabolwa two were killed and unknown circumstances. No one up today has been prosecuted.
Wafanyabiashara wa mitumba wameisihi Wizara ya Afya pamoja na Wizara ya Biashara kuwapa mwongozo watakaofuata ili kupunguza kuenea kwa virusi vya corona wanapoagiza pamoja na wanapouza bidhaa zao. Kupitia shirika lao wafanyabiashara hao wamesema wako tayari kufuata maagizo yote yatakayotolewa ili warejelee biashara zao. Rais Uhuru Kenyatta alitupilia mbali amri ya kusimamisha uagizaji wa nguo hizo iliyokuwa imewekwa na Wizara ya Biashara shara mnamo mwezi wa Aprili. Hao watu ambao wamepewa jukumu watuharakishie. Watuita tukae na wao ama ile njia yote ambayo inafaa waitumie ili mtumba ikuje haraka. As an industry that makes a substantial contribution to our economy in taxes and employment, we would like to assure the president of our commitment to ensure all traders and customers observe all protocols that will be announced to guide the conduct of the business and curb the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Kuna kitu inaitwa physical inspection ama inspection that is one of the things that we'll continue doing fumigation at the country of origin and uh, we are also willing to do fumigation when the goods arrive here in Kenya just to make sure that everybody remains safe Treni ya kisasa ya SGR ya Abiria imerejea safari zake hii leo asubuhi baada ya kusitisha huduma kwa muda wa miezi minne kutokana na janga la corona. Treni ya kwanza iliyokuwa imewabeba Abiria 500 ilingwa nanga kutoka Nairobi kuelekea Mombasa mwendo wa saa mbili asubuhi. Treni hiyo inabeba nusu ya idadi kamili ya Abiria kulingana na masharti mapya ya kuzuia msambao wa corona. Usalama wa Abiria umepewa kipaumbele huku Abiria wa kipimo joto mwili kukiwa na maeneo ya kuoshea mikono na sharti la abiria kuvaa maski kila wakati likizingatiwa treni ya abiria kutoka Mombasa imeondoka mwendo wa saa nane ili wasili Nairobi mwendo wa saa moja jioni kuwezesha abiria kufika nyumbani kabla ya muda wa kafiu Since last week when our CS made this announcement, um, we, put, we began to put our measures together to make sure that our passengers are safe as they travel up and down from Nairobi to Mombasa, Mombasa to Nairobi. One of the things what we are doing is to make sure that this thorough screening of all our passengers as they board the train, and that starts from the point of entry to the ticketing system to the, um, the waiting hall where we have put measures of sanitization, uh, social distancing. As you know, our capacity is normally 1,200. So this morning we have moved about 550 passengers uh, to Mombasa. Uh, as yesterday, we had around 1,500 people who had booked the system. But you know, we can't carry them, especially the second class, they are fully uh, booked and we have excess of them and uh, we hope they can move in the following days. In coordination with the county governments and hospitals, we have an isolation coach. In case we have any emergency or in case we have a critical issue, a critical passenger or that, something that arises within uh, the journey, we, we, we have an isolation coach where we can move and a need needy passenger to that we have staff who have been trained on how to handle those uh, passengers in case of any emergency Kamati maalum itakayo shughulikia maswala ya usalama kwenye mipaka ya Wajia na Somalia imebuniwa. Kwenye kungamano la siku mbili lililojumuisha wazee kutoka jamii zinazoishi mipakani, viongozi pamoja na wakuu wa usalama wameafikia maswala kadhaa yanayolenga kudumisha amani pamoja na kuboresha biashara kati ya nchi hizo mbili. Ahmed Hussein na taarifa hiyo kutoka Wajia. Ni kongamano linalolenga kuleta amani baina ya jamii zinazoishi kwenye mpaka wa Wajia na Somalia. We have no border dispute between Kenya and Somalia. We have security challenges that are cross cutting. These security challenges can only be dealt with if there is close working relationship. The communities that live along the border must be prepared to say the truth. Na uhusiano kati ya watu yetu hapa na wale wa pandio wengine. Hiyo ndio ilikuwa madhumuni yetu kubwa sana 
sisi tukiwa serikali tunaikaribisha hiyo uh, uh, jambo viongozi hao wametaka jamii hizi kusitisha uhasama ambao umelamaza maendeleo na kudorora kwa usalama toka mpaka mpaka huu na upande wengine kwa shauri watu wako wanaenda pale hata kudumisha amani ni jukumu lako kwa hivyo ile tuna matunda tunaongojea kwa wakati huu tupate usalama wa Kenya wawe na usalama wale wanaishi katika Somalia wawe na usalama tupate maendeleo tuchunge jirani mwema hivyo ndio tunaweza kuwa kitu wazee kutoka jamii ya Degodia na Marehano wameafikiana kuishi pamoja kwa amani badala ya migogoro ya mara kwa mara ambao inahujumu hata mazingira ya kufanyia biashara kama wa, eh, wanasiasa na wanaichi ya wajia kile kitu tunafanya ni kuhimisa serikali yetu na kulete serikali yetu kuwa na uhusiano mzuri na serikali ya Somalia ili ili serikali ya Somalia iwe in, ifanye yale yanatakana ili kuhimiza amani upande yao tunataka uhusiano mzuri kati ya watu yetu hapa na wale wa Somalia bila uhusiano mzuri hatuwezi eh, kutimiza yale ambayo tulikuwa nataka huku hali duni ya usalama ikisababisha kudorora kwa maendeleo katika maeneo hayo suluhu litapatikana iwapo wakazi watatoa taarifa muhimu kwa maafisa wa usalama kuhusu makundi ya uhalifu yaliyo katika eneo hilo Ahmed Hussein runinga ya KTN News kaunti ya Wajia Umoja wa jamii ya Mulembe umeendelea kushuhudiwa huku vuguvugu moja la vijana likijitenga na kauli ya seneta wa Kakamega Cleophas Malala ya siku ya Jumamosi kwamba atakuwa sauti ya vijana wa magharibi katika kuhakikisha wanateuliwa kwenye nafasi mbalimbali mbali za uongozi. Vijana hao wamekashifu Malala wakisema amekuwa akiwakosea heshima viongozi Musali Mudavadi na Moses Wetangula wa Ford Kenya wakilalamika kwamba hawakushauriwa kuhusiana na maswala ya yanayowaathiri. Hata hivyo wamesisitiza kwamba wako tayari kufanya kazi na kiongozi yeyote nchini. Alimradi anaunga mkono maazimio ya kiongozi wa ANC kuingia ikulu mwaka wa 2022. We do not recognize you as our spokesperson. We know to you giving an a youth an opportunity to read a statement written by you amounts giving an opportunity for the youth to lead. This is an attempt to hoodwink our Mulembe people. We know you. We are distancing ourselves from people that are purporting to be uh, youth leaders in Western Kenya and we are here to say uh, that the youth uh, all the youth of Western Kenya have not been involved to form the, the Luya Youth Council that is being purported to be on board. We are here to shun away individuals who are trying to use, uh, to use our fellow youth for their own selfish interests. That we have mandated him in Senate because he's from different county and from Busia county is from Kakamega county at least to address some of the issues that are facing our people but now he has failed already in the senate it doesn't mean that if you are appointed today to chair a committee just for impeachment of certain governor that now you can also be appointed through that to become spokesperson of certain region it doesn't happen that way Wafanyakazi wa mashamba ya maua mjini Naivasha wanadai kwamba vyama vyao vya wafanyakazi haviwaongozi na kuwawakilishi na vostahili. Haswa wakati huu wengi wao wamefutwa kazi kutokana na janga la corona. Wafanyakazi hao wanadai kwamba viongozi wanaofaa kupigania haki zao wameendelea kuwapuuza. Ukiangalia nchi kama Israel, mfanyakazi wa maua wa mkono analipwa 100,000 per month. Kenya ni shilingi 1600 na maua ile nalimwa Kenya ni sawa na ile nalimwa Israel of which ni very risky hatuoni viongozi wakitetea wananchi wanaivasha hata mishahara zetu zingine watu wengine hatu kupata vilibaki huko na hata sasa hatuna kazi katika zile nyumba tunazoishi hatuna hata vile tunaweza kujimudu maisha 
sisi tulianza kazi tukiwa bado tukiwa bado wasichana mpaka saa hii mtulipe haki yetu hiyo miezi tangu mwezi wa tatu. mpaka saa hii mwe, tunaelekea mwezi wa nane. mpaka saa hii wamama tunalilia wengine tumepatwa na sukari wengine pressure ni kuchindwa bila tutasaidia watoto Mkurugenzi mkuu wa mamlaka ya huduma jijini Nairobi na himaya yake Meja General Mohamed Badi ameapa kuzirejesha ardhi zote za umma zilizonyakuliwa na kuwaonya wanyakuzi kuwa chuma chao kimotoni. Akizungumza mtaani Parklands baada ya kusitisha ujenzi wa mradi kwenye kipande cha ardhi kilichokuwa kimenyakuliwa na mwekezaji mmoja binafsi, Badi amesema ni wajibu wake kulinda mali ya umma na kwamba atashirikiana na viongozi wote waliochaguliwa kuutekeleza wajibu huo ardhi hiyo imetengewa ujenzi wa hospitali ya umma hata kama hujapata leo nitafadhali sisi kama women enterprise fund we finance na mtazamaji tuie radhi kwa mkanganyiko huo wa picha tutakuletea taarifa hiyo baadaye. Zaidi ya watu tano ambao ni wazee maskini na wanaoishi na ulemavu huko Kangundo Mashariki wamepokea msaada wa chakula na vifaa vingine vya kimsingi kuwasaidia wakati wa kupambana na virusi vya corona waliofaidika wako kwenye maeneo ya Katheini, Kathome, Imilini, Kivi, Kamanzi, Katitu na Kaseve yaliyo kwenye kaunti ndogo ya Kangundo. Walio wazee wametoa wito kwa serikali kuwakumbuka sana wakati huu wa corona. <laughs> watoto wetu watoto wengi ambao wamefanya kazi na Nairobi wamefungiwa wamekosa wamefutwa kazi wana mapato. Na tunashukuru kwa sababu tumepata msaada wa chakula kama unga, tumepata mshere, tumepata kama kama sapuni na tumepata majani, tumepata sukari. Wasee kama wasisi tulikuwa tunapata tapu. Na sasa tumefurahi kuletewe msaada. Sisi wa mama wajane waliona shida nyingi sana kwa sababu hawana kusaidia kusaidiwa na mabwana. Ndresi munini mutuiwa ali tupa msaada kutoka kwa serikali tunasemba asandi sana. Naomba serikali ikumbuke wazee kwa jumla wote e, kwa jumuiya yote ya Kenya maana wote wanaumia. Uh, mimi na marafiki zangu tumekusanya pesa kwa, kwa ajili ya kusaidia wazee wale mavu kwa vile wamefinyika sana wakati huu wa corona tunajua ya kwamba uh, watoto wao wengi waliweza kusimamishwa kazi ndipoze tukaona tukusanye hela na ndio tuwafikie kwa kuwapa chakula Mtazamaji turejelee taarifa yetu ambapo mkurugenzi mkuu wa mamlaka ya huduma jijini Nairobi na himaya yake Major General Mohamed Badi ameapa kuzirejesha ardhi zote za umma zilizonyakuliwa na kuwaonya wanyakuzi kuwa chuma chao kimotoni akizungumza mtani Parklands baada ya kusitisha ujenzi wa mradi kwenye kipande cha ardhi kilichokuwa kimenyakuliwa na mwekezaji mmoja binafsi Badi amesema ni wajibu wake kulinda mali ya umma na kwamba atashirikiana na viongozi wote wote waliochaguliwa kutekeleza wajibu huo ardhi hiyo imetengewa ujenzi wa hospitali ya umma Na taarifa nyingine ambayo inatujia sasa hivi ambayo tutakuletea baadaye ni kwamba bunge la seneti linaendeleza mjadala wa kuahirisha um, zile taratibu ambazo zimetolewa kuhusu mgao wa fedha za county ni taarifa inayoendelea sasa hivi na tutakuwa tukikuletea pindi tu tutakapopata picha hizo tukuarifu uh, na kinachoendelea sasa hivi katika majengo ya bunge la senate ambapo sasa hivi wanajadili mswada um, um, tata au hoja tata kuhusu uh, taratibu mpya ambazo zinastahili kufuatwa na kuzingatiwa katika ugavi wa fedha za county tupate kionjo tu cha akili ambacho kinaendelea sasa hivi No, he has finished. He has finished. So we cannot inform. We, are, we cannot inform somebody who has not who has finished. Senator Mbogo. Senator Mbogo, George Ochino, you are you also are on a, on a point of order.
Yeah, th th thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in the course of these back and forth points of order, I have heard a quip that uh, this matter seems to be beyond the committee. I'm the vice chair. Would I be in order to be guided? Because uh, the committee's mandate uh, runs. It keeps on running. It may have a position that may not be popular here. But have we been rendered functus officio so that we are fold shop and disappear? <laughs> Honorable Chino, today the lawyers are using languages that scientists like ourselves do not understand. I just wanted to inform you, uh, Senate, is that um, what has been requested is for a adjournment so that further processing is being done. The further processing will definitely not ignore the committee that has been handling this. Number two, the budget office is part of our secretariat. They are with us in the a few minutes ago, and there will be part of this. So the processing, I want, if the, if the assurance is what was required, I want to give that assurance that there will be no problem. We are waiting for you to finish it. In fact, we cannot, yeah, we cannot come back before we get all the feedback and before all of us understand these very complicated uh, formulas that have been given. Now, allow me to use my discretion to invite the two last speakers, one of whom was from the other tent, there's a better chamber, <laughs> Senator Kendiki, who was my own staff in Moy University, the first PhD in law in Kenya, and of course my predecessor, Senator Kendiki. And then the final one would be Senator Wetangula, and we are done. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and congratulations on your election as Deputy Speaker of the House. Madam Speaker, I stand to support the motion by the Senator of CIA, my lovely senior Senator James Orengo, to adjourn the House. I support, Madam Speaker, the reasons advanced by the mover of the motion, which is to consult. Madam Speaker, the reason we must consult and do so soberly is because we are about to destroy the country. Madam Speaker, I say so because the consequences whereby we are going to entrench the marginalization that has affected this country for decades, if not for more than a century, those consequences will live for them for the next century or more. It may look simple. Somebody somewhere may be celebrating, but your county is getting a few hundreds of millions at the expense of another county. Madam Speaker, the people of Kenya should know and should remind themselves that the only thing that helped this country to manage its politics and its affairs for a while is devolution. That is what brought the Kenya of the periphery to the center. Today, we are here talking about Taraka Nithi, Isiolo, Kilifi, Marsabek, Mandela, Makweni, and a few counties, including Kisi and Nimira. The same sort that will be used to deny any account even a shilling of where it got last year can be the sword that will be used someday in future by a national government that hates devolution to slash money from each and every county. But our speaker we must consult and I will oppose any attempt to remove even one shilling from the county of the Lakanidi and the are any other county in this country because I am both a senator for Taraka Nidhi and a senator of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Senator. Senator Tangula Moses Masika. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, all I the, support... All the members... All the, all the, all the members, 
I don't know what excitement uh, the Senator of Tarakanit is bringing. Madam house. Speaker, I also support the adjournment motion, but suggest the following. But Madam Speaker, this formula has been very divisive, to say the least. But looking at the amendments casually, they are equally divisive. And Madam Speaker, we are going to end up in a state of these amendments also being dead on arrival. What we need to do is what we did in the last parliament. And Senator Oren was here, Aaron Chariot was here, Murkomen, and the others. Okay. It took us three working days as a whole Senate in Naivasha to push and pull together with the entire CRA with us to come up with the formula that we brought to this house and everybody passed. It is going to be unlikely, Madam Speaker, that even if we adjourned for two, three weeks, and you look at these amendments, I remember the words the distinguished Senator from Mombasa came to tell me here, that at the way we are going, we are going to have 47 formulas on the floor. Everybody will come with a formula. And scientific as it may be, Everybody wants something. This is a house of equity. It's a house of equality. Equality of the vote. Lamu carries one vote. Nairobi carries one vote. And equity because we must slash a level that makes every single corner of this country comfortable in the process of allocating money. So let me urge that the leadership of this house, my distinguished colleague from West Pokot and from Siaya, Take leadership when the country loses, loosens out this closure. Take this house the way we did in the last parliament. Call CRA and any other experts we need and bring a formula that a person in Mandela feels as comfortable as a person in Nairobi, as a person in Kiambu, as a person in Bungoma. That is the only way we can achieve our equity and equality as a house of Senate. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Senators, thank you for your indulgence. I now put the question because I've determined it doesn't con uh, concern counties and so I'm going to be on voice vote. I now put the question which is that the Senate do now adjourn. Will as many of that opinion say aye? Aye. Will as many of the conference say nay? The eyes have it. Honorable Senators, it's now time to interrupt the business of the Senate. The House therefore stands adjourned until tomorrow, Tuesday 14, July 2020. All the other members who have not finished. The House therefore stands adjourned until tomorrow, Tuesday 14, July 2020 at 2 p.m. 2.30 p.m. Na mtazamaji ni tarifa hizi hivi punde kutoka bunge la senate ambalo limekuwa likijadilia na kuhusu uwezekano wa kuahirisha mjadala um, kuhusu mgao wa fedha za county uh, wengi wao wakionekana kupinga pakubwa mapendekezo yaliyotolewa na tume ya ugavi wa mapato ya taifa kwamba pesa zilizotengewa maeneo ya county ziweze kugawa katika county zote 47 kwa usawa takriban shilingi bilioni bilioni 300 ambazo zimetengewa maeneo ya county ziweze kugawa kwa, kwa usawa sasa hivi wabunge katika bunge la senate wakivutana wakikosoana wakipinga mapendekezo hayo wakasema si haki kwa maeneo ya county kwa sababu kila county linatengewa pesa kulingana na uwezo wake wa kuweza kujiendeleza kuweza kuweka miradi ya maendeleo kuna ma county ambazo zimeendelea kuna zile ambazo bado ndio zinainuka kwa hivyo haitakuwa sawa kutumia utaratibu utakaowezesha pesa hizo kugawa kwa kaunti zote kwa usawa kwa sababu kaunti zote si sawa sasa hivi wameahirisha mjadala huo ili waweze kushauriana na kutoa mapendekezo zaidi uh, kuhusu jinsi utaratibu ama utaratibu mwafaka unaostahili kufuatwa katika kugawa fedha za kaunti katika 
uh, hali ambayo haitaweza kuhujumu kaunti fulani na kunufaisha kaunti nyingine hakuna kaunti inayostahili kunyimwa pesa zake hakuna kaunti inayostahili kunyimwa mapato ya taifa yatakayowezesha kaunti hiyo kuweza kuendelea uh, vikao vimeahirishwa pale kulingana na profesa Margaret Kamara ambaye ni naibu speaker ametangaza kwamba vikao vya bunge la senate vitaweza kurejelewa kesho mwendo wa saa nane unusu wa dhuhuri natoka tukikuletea na mengi zaidi kuhusu taarifa zinazoendelea katika bunge au taifa zima ungana nasi mwendo wa saa moja tuweze kukupasha na mengi zaidi nimekuwa wako Zubeida Kome kwa niaba ya wote waliofaulisha matangazo haya sina la ziada nasema asante sana mwendo wa saa moja utakuwa naye Ahmed Bahad kwenye taarifa za zilizala viwanjani nasema asante sana tukutane baadaye uwe na